You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 31. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. I'm Katie Wardrobe, a music technology education trainer, speaker and consultant from midnightmusic.com.au where I give music teachers simple and actionable tips for using technology in music education. It's also the home of the Midnight Music Community where you can find music tech, online training and courses, video tutorials, tips and personalised support. Now today's show is all about finding great images. I'm going to warn you that I have (laughs) a lot of work going on in my street today. It's the next door neighbour's house. For some reason they've decided to rip out their entire front garden and for two days now I've had the sound of you know, like diggers and workmen and all sorts of things going on while they chop down trees and remove plants. So that's still going on today in the background and hopefully not too much of it will be picked up through my microphone here. I thought I would just plough on anyway. I'd set aside this day to record a few episodes, so we'll just have to see how we go. So I wanted to talk today about finding great images because over the past few years I've really found that my need to use and find high quality and interesting and captivating images has increased so much. I use them all the time and it's for things like presentations that I'm doing, for blog posts that I'm writing, for my weekly newsletter, for images that have a quote over the top. You see a lot of those floating around social media. And for things like resource creation, you know, worksheets and printable, downloadable things and other activities. And some of you may even be creating Teachers Pay Teachers resources to sell on that website. And again, you need images all the time for these things. The other part of this is that students also need them for their own assignments. So there's been a massive increase in the need to find and use images over time. And there are some great places where you can find just fabulous images which are free to use and also um, you are permitted to use them. There's no copyright restrictions as well. So today I wanted to talk about four different types of images that you might need. I want to share some places that I use all the time to go to find images that are, that are legal to use. And I'll talk through a few software options for editing images and for adding text over the top of the images. So first I just want to broach the whole topic of copyright with images that you can download from the internet. Now if you were to do a Google search for something that you need a picture of and find a whole stack of images which are perfect for use, it's just really good to be aware that you're not permitted to use those images that you might find. If you click on the images option when you've done a Google search, there'll be a lot a lot of things there, but most of them have copyright which is owned by the creator of that image. Now, if you do do a Google search to find images this way, you can actually go into some advanced search settings and you can sort of Uh, click a few buttons to apply filters and it will allow you to narrow down your search results to Creative Commons licensed or public domain images. So that's okay if you want to do that. I think it's really important to go about finding images the right way and to encourage students to do the same. So encouraging good digital citizenship as it was. Now, something that I do is actually to go to a few places which allow me to search only public domain images. And this is, I find it just a bit quicker. So rather than doing a Google search and then narrowing my search results, I have a few favourite places that I go to find public domain or Creative Commons licensed images. Now, the difference between those two things is public domain um, basically means that there is no sort of copyright ownership over the image. You can do whatever you like to it, which is great. And you can change it in any way or edit the image. 
and there are a number of places to find those style images. The Creative Commons ones are slightly different in that the copyright owner, the person who's taken or created the image, still retains ownership of that image, but they've given you permission up front to use the image in certain ways. And there are different levels of Creative Commons license. Some of them um, allow you a lot of freedom with how to use the image. You may just need to credit the person that's created that image. And some of them will allow you to change or they call remix the image in some sort of way, which means you are permitted to add text over the top or maybe combine that image with other ones in a collage and so on. So you just need to double check the, the, the terms and conditions of the Creative Commons licensed if that's the type of image that you've found. Now, in addition to public domain and Creative Commons licensed images, you may also choose at times to go to stock photo websites and actually pay up front for the image, which gives you a lot of freedom over how you can do it. Now, I don't use stock photo images all the time, but I do use them on occasion, particularly if that's the only place I can find the perfect image for the thing that I'm looking for. Sometimes when you're searching all of the free options, you may not find exactly what you're looking for. And sometimes the stock photo websites, because they're set up really for people to find images for this purpose for using in, you know, on websites and in presentations and so on, uh, it may be more likely that you find the right thing there. So from time to time, I will pay for photos if that's the only place I can find what I need. Now, they're not really cheap to use the paid stock photo images. So, you know, you just need to weigh up what you're using it for. I would be less likely to pay for one if I'm just using it for a workshop, workshop presentation and more likely to pay for one if I want to, for instance, set up an advert that's going out onto Facebook. So just toss up whether you think that that's going to be useful and worthwhile. Now, with the places that I'm going to talk about in a moment where you can find images, some of them allow you to set up an account on their website. So you have a login, a username and a password. And this can be a really useful thing. A lot of them don't require you to do that, but I found that it's useful to actually set up an account because it allows you to save favorite images. So for some of the websites, I will go there and I'll be looking for a specific thing. But if when I'm there, I see things that I like that I may use in the future, and this happens a lot, I think, wow, that's a great image. I don't need it right now, but I may need it down the track. I will actually save it to my account in my favorites option there. And that's just really a time-saving thing for the next time you go looking for images, you can go straight to your favorites collection and check what's there and see if you've already found something that will suit what you need. So let's talk about the four different types of images that you might need for all of those things that I mentioned earlier. So the first type of image is photographs. And this is probably the thing that I use the most. And to find great photos which I am able to use, which are public domain or copyright free, I tend to go to the website Pixabay as my first port of call. So it's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, Pixabay. Now, all of the things that I'm going to mention today, and I am going to mention quite a few websites and links and resources and things, I'm actually going to list them all in the show notes for this episode. So you can head over there and you can actually download a copy. So if you're out and about walking, driving your car, um, going on a run, <laughs> uh, while you're listening to this podcast, you don't necessarily need to write them down. So the links you'll be able to find at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 31. That's the episode number for today. So Pixabay is a great website. It is all public domain images and basically lots of people from around the world have contributed photographs to that website. And there are some really, really high quality, beautiful images on there. You can go on there and there's a big search box and you can just type in some words to help you find the image that you need. So if you just wanted to take a look at this and see the types of things that are available, you could go there and type in music or musical instruments or audio is one that I type in a lot because I need kind of music tech gear pictures. And typing in those things and pressing enter will bring up a whole stack of uh, images around that topic. You might need to search for a few different terms over time and you may also uh, think outside the square a little bit. You don't necessarily always need music images. Sometimes I need an image which will illustrate a feeling or emotion or 
uh, like frustration, for instance, I might be doing a presentation about music technology and the frustrations that people feel. So I might look for an image uh, which relates to that word. I can type in the word frustration or I can type in a number of other words which are similar and look for synonyms and um, look at all the images that are there. So Pixabay is one of my favourites and that is one where you can set up a free account and you can save favourites to your account. So you can download um, at no cost whatsoever. If you set up your own account, uh, you won't see as many adverts. I think that that's correct. So you don't have to set up an account there. Uh, but if you do, you won't see as many adverts. And the great thing is you can also contribute to the Pixabay website. Now, I've been intending to do this for ages. I haven't yet done it, but I really will do this um, probably in our next school holiday period when I've got a little bit of time up my sleeve. You can actually upload your own photos to this to help contribute to the pool of photos that's available for everyone. If you just want a little bit of inspiration when you go to that website, um, there's a link at the top of the page, which is called Editor's Choice. And I love just clicking on that just to see some of the beautiful images that have been added recently. And again, sometimes you'll see something there where you go, wow, that will be useful for this thing down the track, you know. Um, I use a lot of images from there, which are, you know, great for adding text over the top. So, you know, you see images online shared on social media, which have a photo in the background and a quote written over the top, perhaps, or a thought for the day or a tip of the day. This is where I will find those background images and then simply add the text over the top using a graphic design program, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So that's Pixabay, my top uh, one there. The second one that I'll mention is called Libra Stock. And this is a website which actually searches more than 40 other websites. So it's kind of like a, an aggregate website. So you go to Libra Stock, you again type in your search term, press enter, and it will show you a whole stack of images from a number of different websites. So one of the websites that it searches is actually Pixabay. I do tend to go to Pixabay first just to, you know, cut to the chase to there, but you could go to Libra Stock and just uh, search there. It will show you images related to your search and then you can click through and go to the actual website where the image lives. Um, and as I mentioned, it searches more than 40 websites, so it's a great one to, to go to. Now, both of those first, web, first two websites I've mentioned are for public domain images. And the reason I go to those first is because the public domain um, conditions or, you know, uh, the, the state that that image is, is a public domain image. And it means that I've got the most flexibility to, to change if I need to or add text or edit it in any way. Now, I'm just going to mention a third one here. I don't personally use this uh, myself, but for those of you working in the classroom and you have students that need to go and find images, um, you and I both know that it can be difficult sending kids online, particularly if you're working with young students in elementary school. It can be difficult just sending them out into the wild, wild world of <laughs> searching for images online because sometimes the things they type in may not bring up results which are suitable for them to see. Um, when my own kids were quite young, I used to make them tell me what is the word you're, that you're typing into Google to find an image. And sometimes they would tell me the word or phrase and I would be like, okay, no, do not type that in because I already knew what the results were going to be and it may not be at all what they wanted and they might end up seeing images which they should not be seeing at that age. So it can be, you know, a little bit... Um, a little bit dicey sending kids off to just search um, for images there. So there is a website which is set up uh, for students to search and it's just images and they're all kid-friendly, education-friendly, um, safe search options. And this one is called Picks for Learning. It's a number four, so it's P-I-C-S number four, learning, picksforlearning.com. So if you need to send students off, that might be a good place to go to. The second type of image that I'm going to talk about is icons. And icons, as you would know, appear everywhere, really. If you're looking around, um, just even while you're you know, walking around the shops, there are icons everywhere to communicate really quickly and simply the thing that you need to know. So, for instance, if you're walking around the shops, um, you will often see an icon, you know, a man and a woman icon, which indicate that's where the bathrooms are. And it's a really quick way. A lot of icons are 
kind of worldwide language. And so if you go overseas, you'll see the same sorts of icons to communicate the same information. Um, lots of road signs use icons and, and other things like that. And even on websites, you'll see similar icons everywhere which communicate certain types of information. Now, I found that there are a number of websites where you can download free icons and they're fabulous. I, I really love this idea for using icons to communicate simple ideas. Now, you can go to an icon website and you can find fantastic icons to do with music or audio or education or any other thing you can possibly think of. There are so, so many. And I've even been thinking about some sort of classroom activity where you could potentially use icons. Even emoji have become an option like this to communicate certain emotions and that again they're a great thing to use. So one of the icon websites that I go to is called flaticon.com and this is really great. There's a couple of extra things that this website has which is why I really like it. You can download individual icons here. But you can also download uh, what they call packs of icons and they're basically matching sets of icons. So if you searched, for instance, for musical instruments, you might find a matching set of icons which have lots of different musical instruments, but they're all designed by one graphic designer. So they all have a similar look and feel about them. And this can be really great if you're using them in worksheets or your teachers pay teachers resources and so on and presentations and things. They can just be really good for tying everything together and making it look um, kind of matching and seamless. And, you know, you, you, you just end up with a better result, a better looking result. As an example, if you go there and type in music elements, you'll find that there's a, a pack with that name and there's about 70 different icons within that one. And it's got a combination of musical instruments. It's got some things like um, synthesizer icons and uh, audio equipment and microphones and leads and guitars and all sorts of things. Really, really useful. I find these a little bit like stickers when I was growing up I used to love stickers I'm a child of the 80s you know and um, they they were a thing of my childhood where I just collected all these stickers they were fabulous I I didn't want to use a lot of them because I just loved collecting them and never felt that I wanted to sort of get rid of them in any way but I find icons are kind of like the digital version of that now, on the Flat Icon website, there are some free icons and some paid ones as well. So you'll see when you look at a pack, you'll see that there's a little S in the corner. And I can't remember what it stands for, but those are the free ones. And then there's some packs which have a little crown icon and they're the ones which are paid. So you can choose to just use the free ones. That's all great. One other thing that this website does, which I was blown away when I found this, so excited because there is a place that you can go to once you've opened up one of those packs. So let, let's say you go and find that music elements pack that I mentioned and you open it up, you'll end up seeing on the page where you can see all the individual icons, you'll see a little button at the top right, which says uh, something like create background from this icon pack. And you can click on that. And essentially, it allows you to create a background with repeated icons on it. So if you can imagine perhaps, you know, like wallpaper where you can see a repeated picture throughout the wallpaper, you kind of create a digital version of wallpaper. So you can choose icons from the pack that you're looking at click on them and the website will actually place them on the screen in a repeated fashion. So it will put, let's say I choose um, castanets. And if I click on the castanets icon, it will put that on the screen and evenly space the castanets all throughout the screen. So I can then use that as a background for a presentation I'm doing or print it out and so on. Now, you don't just have to stick with one icon on your background. You can actually add as many as you like and you can move them around. If you move one of the castanet icons around, it will actually move all of them around at the same time. So it keeps everything really evenly spaced. It saves you having to copy and paste and move individual icons as many as you need. And it's just a really quick way to create great backgrounds. 
definitely go and check that out. Have a little play. You can Once you've created your background sort of image and you're happy with it, you can then download that and you can choose what size you want to download it. So you can make it fit your PowerPoint presentation or if you wanted to print it, you could fit it onto letter or A4 size paper or larger and so on. Really, really great. Another icon website is called iconsdb.com, which stands for, I think, database, iconsdatabase.com. And this one's really useful because once you see an icon that you like, you can actually change the color of it. So if you were to bring up, for instance, a hand icon, you could take a look at that and it doesn't matter what color you see it in on the screen, if it's black, for instance, there's a, an option on the right hand side of the, the page to actually go in and change the color. So if you actually need a red hand icon, you can change it to red and then download it for use in your projects. With all of the icon websites, basically you'll find the icon and or the pack of icons and you'll download whatever you've found. You, you choose to download it and you'll be downloading a .png file, an image file, which you can then use in all of your projects. So that's a great one, iconsdb.com. It has limited music icons there, um, so it may not have everything you need, but if you just need some general icons, um, that would be a great one to go to, and particularly if you need to change the colour of them. The third one that I've used in the past as well, and this was really before I found Flat Icon, but the third one I've used is called The Noun Project, and that's another great icons website. Again, you can go there and um, download some free icons there. There's a lot of beautiful icons there all designed, and um, they're less colourful on that website. Uh, the Flat Icon website has probably the most colourful ones, uh, but Noun Project, again, is another useful one. This episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news, and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. The third type of image I'm going to talk about today is clip art. And again, all of these things are really pretty similar, but clip art tends to be the group of images which are kind of, um, you know, cartoon-like and you can use them in your, again, in your projects. You might find pictures of little kids or um, instruments and so on. And clip art are really useful for using in all of these projects. So if you're doing worksheets, you might just want to illustrate something or make it a little bit more interesting to look at with some clip art. So a couple of places that I've gone for clip art um, recently, uh, actually for a few years I've been to a website uh, which is run by an artist called Philip Martin and he has a whole stack of clip art which he has designed especially for educators. So there's a lot of education um, images on there for all subject areas, so science and maths and geography and history and so on, but he has a music section too. And he has some really nice illustrations there which you can use in your projects. Even a Peter and the Wolf one, I've used that one a lot. There's a little image which shows a Peter character uh, walking next to a wolf and I think there's the duck and the bird and the cat also in the, in the little image as well. Now, with his website, you need to do a little bit of clicking around to get to the actual clip art. He runs his website and supports his website through, um, through advertising. So there are quite a number of adverts on there. You just need to kind of pick through and find the right link to click on. But if you can look for the place where you can see different subjects or topics, find the music ones and then click through to there. Now, I've used a lot of his non-music ones as well, even for music things. So um, in the case of Peter and the Wolf, for instance, I wanted individual images for all of the different 
uh, you know, characters in the Peter and the Wolf story. Now, he didn't have a separate grandfather picture in his music collection. So I actually went looking through the historical characters and I found, um, I can't remember who it is now, but someone, some historical character who just looked grandfatherly. And I used that for my, my Peter and the Wolf um, presentation that I was making. So that's a great one. Now, more recently, I've been going to the Teachers Pay Teachers store. So in addition to being being able to uh, search for and buy lesson plans and activities and worksheets and so on from Teachers Pay Teachers, it's also a great place to look for free or paid graphics and backgrounds and clip arts clip art and borders and so on. There's a lot of stuff on there. So the reason uh, that those things are on the Teachers Pay Teachers website is that people who make their own resources to sell on Teachers Pay Teachers need all of these things to make their resources. So there are a number of graphic designers on there who sell their own products on the Teachers Pay Teachers website simply for other Teachers Pay Teachers sellers to use. Now, some of these designers have some free things. They'll have some free examples of their work. So you can go there and download those if you're, you know, not in the position to pay for things. But there's also some fantastic paid options as well. So if you've got the budget, you can go there and uh, basically most of the time you're paying for a big set of images. It's not just one single image at a time. You can pay for a whole set of images which are all to do with um, you know, kids showing different emotions or different backgrounds or different borders and so on. So a great place to go and have a look for images there. The fourth type of image and final type of image I'll talk about today are music specific images. Now, there's often a need uh, for us as music teachers to create resources which show musical elements. So sometimes you might need to create a worksheet which just shows a treble clef picture or maybe a series of notes which make up a specific rhythm and you want the students to be able to clap that rhythm but you need to have it in your presentation or on your worksheet and so on. And I, over time, I actually ended up creating some of my own notation images because I was needing to use them quite often in presentations and workshops and so on. I decided that I would create a little set and maybe share them with people because I, I thought, well, if I'm finding them a need for them in what I'm doing, I'm sure lots of other teachers have a need for them as well. So I decided to create some images. Um, I just used my notation software and basically brought up an image on the screen of the element and I'll, I'll use the treble clef as an example. I can bring that up on the screen with no background, no stave or anything on it and I'd make it quite large on my screen, take a screenshot of it, so you know where you take a still picture image of the thing that's showing on your screen and then I did a little clever thing where you can remove the background to make it transparent so it's just the treble clef and no white background behind it. And then I saved that as an image file. So I went and did that for just a handful of things. But once I got started, <laughs> I decided that, you know, I thought I would just start with maybe crotchet and quaver and minim and semi-breathe and treble clef and bass clef and maybe a stave, a couple of other things. And then I kind of thought, well, if you've got the notes, you kind of need the matching rests as well. So I made crotchet rest and minim rest and all of those and then I thought, well, with quavers, you've got single quaver with, you know, the stem and then maybe you need two quavers joined together and sometimes you need four quavers joined together or three quavers in a group. So I made all of those. And anyway, it ended up being a really big collection after all. So I think there's, there's definitely more than 150 images in my collection. Um, at two different sizes, so small ones and large ones. And I've had them available on my website for a number of years now and it's been a really popular download. So I'll again, I'll link to that in the show notes if you'd like to download your own uh, copy of that notation library. Uh, but it's fairly extensive now. There is not every single thing in there and there are some things which just don't make sense to create in my mind. Um, so these are things that you would need to show on a worksheet and this allows you, having individual notation images in this way, allows you to freely drag them around and move them wherever you want on the page if you're using something like PowerPoint. So I know some of you out there create worksheets and so on in, say, a Word document or in Google Documents. 
and you might actually find a font that allows you to create create notation um, icons that way. Now, this is totally possible and if it's working for you, don't change anything. That's all great. But I was finding that that doesn't work for me. I prefer the freedom to move everything around freely on the screen. And this, um, by using notation images and PowerPoint, I can freely position anything anywhere at any time. And so it just gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're creating things. So if you want a copy of that notation library, uh, totally free to download. And again, I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes. Now, after I did the notation library, I decided to do a collection of guitar chord images. So these are the ones, you know, those little ones which show the fretboard, which usually appear above the staff, and it shows you how to play the G major chord or the D major chord. So I made a collection of the guitar images as well. There's only basic chords there. I have not done every single chord possible. I did the really uh, simple ones that you would start with if you were teaching guitar to students at school. Um, then after that, I decided I should do the same thing for ukulele. So I did that as well. So, so again, you can download those ones for free too. And I'll link to all of those in the show notes. So that's the four types of images that you might use and some of my places where I go to find them. Now, once you've downloaded images and you want to use them in your resources, sometimes you need to change or edit them in some way. So sometimes you might need to crop them or you might need to um, make a transparent background like I was mentioning before with the notation images. Uh, sometimes you might want to add text over the top of a photograph and there's some really great uh, software or app options out there which will allow you to do all of these things. I want to run through a few of the ones that I've used in the past and you know some of them are free. Actually I think all of the ones I'm going to mention today are free. A couple of them have paid upgrade options if you want to but they are optional upgrades as well. So one of the the one that I use uh, the most for this purpose is called Canva, C A N V A, Canva, and it's an online tool. So you can basically log into your Canva account. You can create an image of any size and dimension. So it might be a presentation style, or it might be. Uh, for me, I'm posting a lot on social media, so they have, for instance, a template which is ideally designed for Facebook posts and for Instagram posts and so on. But you can basically go in there, uh, set up a new uh, template, and then you can add an image to that background and then add text over the top. And you can crop your photo, you can um, make it a transparent background, you can, uh, what else can you do? You can rotate the image, you can add a filter to the image. So um, a number of times if I need to add text over the top of the image, I will actually put a filter on the photo first because then when you add the text it makes the, the text when you add the text over the top it makes it easier to read if the image is not too vibrant and getting in the way of the text. So that's Canva. Um, there's a lot of text style options within Canva as well so you can have text of you know sort of curly letters or sans serif letters sort of a bit plainer. Um, there's some fancy ones there's some yeah just some great great options in there. Canva has a lot of icons itself in there and it also has its own collection of free images that you can use. So sometimes I'll just search in Canva to see if there's something there that I, that I can use. If I can't find it, then I'll go to Pixabay and import the image into Canva so that I can edit or change it after that. Now, a, quite a similar tool, which I know a lot of other people use, is called PicMonkey. It's P-I-C, monkey. And again, it does all the same sorts of things. It's an online tool, allows you to uh, create images and add text and edit images. And um, it's got its own collection of images too and templates and all sorts of things there as well. So either of those are great. They're both free to use um, with paid upgrade options. And there are free images in there. So if, I'll, I'll speak about Canva because I know that one better. But there are a number of images within Canva that you can use for your designs. Some of them are free and some of them are actually paid. So if you choose to use a paid image, you just pay $1 or so for using that image and it's a one-time use only. So you use the image, download your creation and then that's it. So only a dollar, which is great. And I've, I've done that quite a number of times and it's been really, really useful. 
One that I've discovered more recently, and this is a fantastic tool, free to use, and it has, again, a lot of inbuilt images that you can use and text styles and so on, backgrounds and and whatnot, um, where you can specifically create things like those quote images that I was mentioning before. And this is called Adobe Spark Post. If you go to that, uh, if you just search for that, you'll go to the Adobe website. And this is one of their free tools. They actually have a couple of others as well, which allow you to create like, I think, a, a single web page or a video. But the one I've been using the most is called Adobe Spark Post. And it's really set up really well to create these images with text overlay. So this is a fantastic one for you as teachers to use um, to create your own resources and so on, but also for students to use as well. Um, I may do a future episode on some ideas for this, but one thing that they could do, for instance, is perhaps you're studying some, some songs in class and maybe the students pick one of those songs and a favourite line of lyrics from the song and they put that over the an image, they choose an image which um, kind of matches and they put the favourite lyrics over the top of the image. So it might just be one single line from a song. And that can be a great way just to sort of um, add to a digital portfolio about something that you're doing. I know one teacher who used that for, I think she was doing a unit on musicals and uh, music theatre. So she had students, whichever musical they were studying at the time, she got them to choose one single line or a quote Uh, from one of the characters and they created an image to go with that assignment. So I hope you found that information useful. I know that a number of you are already using lots of images in your work so hopefully this has given you a couple of other ideas for where to find images and the ways in which you can edit them using some online tools. Um, I actually have a lot of fun finding images and I have to stop myself (laughs) from spending too much time on it. Uh, Occasionally I do actually set a timer. Uh, My weakness is that when I go to Pixabay for instance to find a photograph I will search and find something in the first page which is perfectly fine to use for my need but for some reason I feel the need to keep looking through every single other page that's come up just in case there's a better option out there. So I've learnt um, in recent times to actually set a timer and I'm not kidding about this, I actually do set a timer for something like five minutes to find an image that I need otherwise I can just kind of get lost down that rabbit hole. So um, my advice for you is to do the same thing if you find that you're spending a lot of time, you know, playing around with these images and making them look all nice and everything. Uh, And also for students in class too, it can be really easy for them to spend a lot of time on this and it's not something, it's probably not the focus. Finding images is not the focus of your lesson. You want them to get to the musical bit. So set a timer in class, great thing to do, and it will just focus everybody on what they need to be getting on with. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 31. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.